Welcome to TechBytes Mobile. Today I'm going to be talking about the SAP Android SDK and how this SDK accelerates your development of native Android enterprise applications. So let's get started. So once a developer has downloaded and installed the SAP Cloud Platform SDK for Android, you will get this option to start a new project um, inside your Android Studio start screen. And, and if we click on it, the first uh, capability or first screen we see is your mobile services connection account or connection settings, right? This is where you basically set up um, the connections. So if you navigate then into the detail screen of mobile services, you get a list of app endpoints which are available for you as a developer, right? And we want to build an application based on an existing endpoint. An endpoint contains uh, the which backends are available for this application development and security configuration, and a couple more things which are for operations. I also have the options to create application um, configurations here on mobile services or use uh, our sample backend. For this purpose, we're going to go with an existing demo backend. Here it lists us uh, what OData services are available. So these are the destinations uh, we can use in the application. Now on the next screen, we define our Android project. This is tech but bytes and Android. And we go and type here SAP. Then we go ahead and go to the capability selection or capability screen. This is right. We want to have the data available offline. Um, we want to have a sample a generated UI we can use uh, for the destination. There's also the capability to activate logging, reporting, crash reporting, push. So you don't have to develop boilerplate code, right? If you start the project. And now if we hit finish, um, the Android wizard generates the basic uh, and Android Studio project, right? So then we can get started with the application, right? And let's uh, click run here. Um, so it generates, finished uh, the generation of all the code. And if we open up um, the application and take a look at it, once the Gradle scripts are completed, we get this Java um, generated layer, right? And this here is then a wood um, based on our OData model on the backend, we have typed classes here, right, which accelerate the development drastically because you know, this is basically my model layer uh, right away generated. And let's have a look at the app which was generated by the wizard. So I click on get started. The login screen comes up and I can just type my user in here, this is sap.com. And then the application now uh, connects to mobile services. We get screens uh, which are generated uh, for us. These can be customized, of course, uh, in a real project. And the first thing the application does, because we decided to have the data offline, right? It will initialize uh, the offline store, download all the data, and make it available for us offline. After, uh, from now on, then every sync is obviously only going to be a Delta sync, right? So this is the uh, uh, longest operation. And then we have here our backend data model, basically, with a generated UI, right? I can, you can see how reactive this is. I have uh, all the data offline, right? It's very fluent navigation inside the app. I can, we have some sample controls here. And the UI is of course meant to be um, just a reference, right? So I can see um, what's possible. But what happened under the hood here is basically in less than three or four minutes, I have taken all of the data from my backend offline and I have basically a project which has implemented the authentication and the synchronization, right? And let me show you what the result could be if you implement now a real UI on top of this. All right, so let's close Android Studio and open 
a reset project. We want to have this technician project. This window terminate. And then we hit run. Run and you see we use the exact same backend here. So all which is has been implemented um, is a completely different UI. But we are this is on top of the exact same data model. We built the following app, right? And this is just a reference app um, showing you, you know, what is possible. And these are like now you have a real native controls, right? You have all the capabilities. For example, show me a the destination on the map. I can go back to tasks, uh, navigate out. Um, I can uh, work. I can see details. Right? Um, I can do things inside the task, say, oh, I completed this. Yes. So you just saw how the SAP Android SDK really accelerates the development of native Android applications through the generation of the synchronization layer. And this gives the developer the chance to really focus on a mobile experience. Of course, everything is secure and administrators can operate this solution through mobile services. If you want to learn more about how to build mobile enterprise applications, visit us at developers.sap.com slash mobile. And stay tuned for the next edition where I'm going to be talking, you, talking to you about the Mobile Transaction Bridge, the tool to mobilize data out of your ABAP systems. Enjoy.